Yeah, it's a it's a long time ago now. I uh, I signed my first professional contract when I was uh, 16 years old. I went to Holland, uh, played in the first team of PSV when I was 17. Unfortunately, I had a bad injury which kept me out for uh, almost two years, and people were in doubt whether I would be able to play at a, at the highest level. Uh, but to make a long story short, I, I managed to recover and I managed to fulfill uh, a lot of my potential, a lot of my dreams and uh, obviously playing for clubs like Chelsea and Barcelona, um, it's the top level and it's, it's, uh, you cannot compare anything to that. It's uh, the feeling of, of competing for, for championships and, and having that pressure to compete at the highest level all the time, it's uh, what, what makes football great. Well, first of all, I, I had an injury uh, for three, four months ago of my Achilles tendon. And uh, I was looking uh, in the later stages of my recovery for a, a place where I could come and, and just focus 100% on, on recovering. Um, obviously getting some opinions from, from doctors and physios. I was very impressed and I thought, OK, this is a place where I w would like to come back. And now I've been here for almost two weeks and uh, everything is going very well. It's, uh, it's an amazing place because when you, when you arrive here from the first moment, you know, the people set out a pro program for you. Uh, medically, the screening, uh, everything is looked at. Uh, not only the injury, but your physical shape. And uh, from day one, the, the hard work starts to, to recover. So uh, I've been very impressed. Well, Aspital is at the top level. It's, uh, like I was saying, that all the facilities are here. Uh, from the moment you arrive, you feel that, okay, this is, is a place where uh, not only doctors and physios, but the people around, they make you feel welcome. They take you through a process where they assess you uh, physically. And from then on, uh, the program is set. and. From morning to, to late afternoon, you, your only focus is to work on the injury and, and recover. Um, so for me, it's, uh, you know, from what I read is uh, Aspita, the, the objective is to be at the top level in their, uh, in their department and uh, I can, can easily say that they're well underway. Yes, unfortunately I have suffered a, a few serious injuries. I broke my ankle when I was 17. I had a double fracture when I was 33. Uh, I now have had a partial tear of, uh, in the insertion of my Achilles. So there's been a few big injuries. I've been very fortunate with, uh, with muscle injuries. I've had very few. Um, the most difficult thing is not to be able to enjoy the day today, to, to go out on, on the field and, and enjoy the football. Um, but in some, some respect, you, when you have a, an injury, you start to appreciate much more how lucky and privileged you are that you're able to play football for a living, that you're able to um, do what you love every day. And while you're injured, I think you get to realize that more and that's what gives you the passion and, and the objective to, to recover as quick as possible. Yeah, no, I mean, there's no secrets really. Uh, I think it's uh, looking after your body. It's uh, uh, appreciating what you're doing. Uh, and really do it with passion, I think. Um, and it's the mindset. I think the mind can take us much further than, than the body feels. Um, when you think your body can't go any further, I think it's the mind that pushes you on. And uh, if you're, you're strong enough mentally, uh, and the character and the, the desire, first and foremost, is there every day to push yourself um, have the ambition to play that one more year, one more year. That's what takes 
well, that's what's taken me this far anyway. Yeah, of course, uh, you know, it's inevitable. Uh, the day will come when I, when I stop. Uh, and I, I've started preparing a little bit. I've not set a focus on, okay, this is the exact direction that I want to go to. This is, I'm not sure if I want to maybe go into coaching or management or, um, but it will definitely be in the footballing world. I think I have a lot of experience uh, both on and off the field, so uh, I just have to find a direction where something that gives me 10% pleasure of the, of the actual playing. So uh, once I do that, I will set my mind to it. The biggest achievement? Uh, I think it's everything. I think it's... Um, the fact that when I was young, uh, people expected me to go far because I, I had a, uh, was regarded as a big talent uh, and to live up to the expectations of some of the people, to have been able to take in the injuries and overcome them, uh, to have won trophies, to have won major trophies, and to have fulfilled my my biggest ambitions, which was to play for top clubs. Uh, and then I think the, the longevity, I think uh, 22 years professional now, and I still have the desire to, to keep going. So that's why I'm here. That's why I'm here working hard. So uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, the best memories is I think when I look back is okay the moments that you win a trophy together but I think it's the the day-to-day -day stuff the connections that you make with teammates the connections that you make with fans and and with certain clubs that you play for um, so the the memories will be more in general than than single moments uh, obviously with a national team recently doing really well um, the most difficult part is not be, not being able to play I think injuries are the most difficult part or at times sitting on the bench can be very difficult as well. <laughs> well, football is, has been a major part of my life. I've kicked the ball since I can remember and I will probably be involved with football for the rest of my life also. I've, uh, I've got four children, I've got three boys who are all talented footballers. Um, my oldest boy plays for under-19s of Iceland and my, my two other boys are playing for uh, Espanyol in Barcelona so every, every weekend is, is football, whether I'm playing or not. Um, there's some good Johnson playing football over the weekend and um, I think um, for the first years now uh, because I've been playing for so long and, and uh, our family has always been about what I'm doing, like where I'm playing, or where we're going to move as a family, or how how the weekend will turn out, or my mood swings are happy or sad. I think um, as soon as I stop, I want to dedicate myself completely to the family and the children. Um, and uh, I think going to watch my children play football is gives me more pleasure than to watch any uh, any other game really I think it's exciting I think it's something new obviously a different time period uh, which was met with a few uh, criticisms and skepticisms but we should realize that uh, football is uh, is a very global global sport and it uh, it should not depend on what suits some people better than others um, and you know just walking around here in Qatar you you see the, the amount of people uh, working on a day-to-day -day basis to prepare to to have a great World Cup to show the world that this will be a, a huge success um, and once that happens I think we will see a, a different dimension in, in football whether the World Cup maybe shouldn't always be played during the summer or there can be different time time periods so not only the fact that it will 
be held here, but also the time period may, may, maybe will broaden the minds of some people. Yes, I, th uh, I do see more success because uh, the ambition is there, um, the facilities are there now, the, um, the desire to improve is there, um, and plus the fact that the average age of the national team that played during the summer is, is quite low, so you have a lot of players who will be there for definitely the next World Cup if they qualify or the European Championships after that, so, and we have a lot of young talent coming through also. Um, so it's exciting times for Icelandic football. It's, um, I think it really uh, lifted us to a, a different level this summer, not only as a, as a footballing nation, but uh, as a nation by itself. I think people are around the world who followed the Euros this summer, they, I think they got to know the character of the Icelandic people a little bit. And uh, I'm very proud of that because the people conducted them, the fans conducted themselves really well. They went to the stadium uh, to enjoy themselves, to take in the atmosphere and um, that's what football should be about. It shouldn't be about crowd trouble or fighting or this and that. It should be everyone going to the stadium to enjoy themselves and I think uh, Icelandic fans set a great example of that.